Hello guys, uh, so welcome to the video lecture series of engineering mathematics. Well guys, uh, I just uh, came to know from the, the, my experience that most of the students face problem uh, in engineering mathematics. So uh, today I am uh, recording the lecture for uh, uh, say differential calculus. So guys, let us enjoy this uh, series of lecture. So today I am starting with the concept of successive differentiation successive differentiation guys what is the meaning of successive differentiation its meaning is uh, finding the derivative of a given function in succession suppose if my function is say y is equal to fx be any function of x be any function of x then we know that its first derivative is divided by dx or we denote it by say y1 or we denote it by y dash or we denote it by f dash x or sometimes we denote it by d of y here d is the operator that is nothing but d by dx by now as we are talking about is successive differentiation so uh, we are just finding the derivative of the given function in succession so now we define d to y over dx2 its meaning is d by dx of dy by dx and we denote it by further or say by y2 or y double dash or f double dash x or sometimes we denote it by d square of y so try to understand this Again, suppose if I find its derivative, that is d3y over dx3, by same argument, it is nothing but your y3 or y double dash or d3 of y. If I continue this process, we reach to say any n derivative dxn. We call it as y n or sometimes say this subscript super subscript or d n of y. So guys, it is the notation. So either we'll use this notation or this notation, or sometimes you will face this notation in the differential equations. Now we are going to generalize our idea of for some function. Suppose my first function is y equal to x to the power. Suppose I want to find its n derivative. So y1 is n into x raised to power n minus 1. Now what is y2? It is n into n minus 1 x raised to power n minus 2. Then your y3 is n n minus 1 n minus 2 x raised to power n minus 3. Now by looking at this pattern guys, can we generalize this idea? My rth derivative, can you find? What is that? n, n minus 1, n minus 2. Now see, most of the guys commit mistake. It should be n minus r. They like this. Let's try to understand it. Look at this uh, subscript and this last bracket. This is n minus 2. This is 1 less than this subscript. So now, let us make the correction here. So 
C. So how much should be? It should be 1 less than this R. That is 1 less than this R means R minus 1. And x raised to power n minus r. So we can write this as n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 till till n minus r plus 1 x raised to power n minus r. So this is my rth derivative. Now let us put condition over n as well as on r. Suppose if I consider if my n is a natural number. Now see and say r is equals to n. Then guys can we recognize it my y n will be turning out to be n n minus 1 n minus 2 n minus n plus 1 x raised to power n minus n. So this is nothing but turning out to be n into n minus 1 n minus 2 till 1. So what is this n factorial? Now guys it is not mandatory that that this power will be always as a natural number. Now suppose if n is any real number then what should I do and r is equals to my n derivative. Now please try to understand that this n derivative, so in general that I am writing here n derivative, this is always a uh, natural number because when we are finding the derivative, it never comes as a fraction that we are not finding the half derivative. So therefore, as I am considering r is equal to so my n derivative in this case, we will leave this bracket like this up to 1 like this. So now for example, if say my y is equal to say x raised to power 3. So now we know that then there this n is a natural number. So power is a natural number. So your third derivative is nothing but coming out to be 3 factorial that is namely 6. But what about the case when y is root x? When y is root x, so we will write it something like this. My y1 is we know that it is 1 over 2 root x that is 1 by 2 x raised to power minus half like this and when we are finding my second derivative it is 1 by 2 into minus half and x raised to power minus 3 by 2. Now suppose since my rth derivative formula was n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 till till n minus r plus 1 x raised to power n minus r. Now here n is half n is half okay and uh, I want to uh, find uh, say n a derivative here. So I will substitute here half that is half minus 1 half minus 2 continue like this this is a half minus n plus 1 and x raised to power nothing but n is half half minus n so this will goes like this now uh, see look at this guys so it is a very easy way to generalize these formulas okay now let us come to one uh, just a linear function suppose if my function is say y is equals to ax plus b raised to power m so uh, guys m is any real number here a and b are any real number so what is my first derivative my y1 is m into ax plus b m minus 1 into a what is y2 m into m minus 1 into ax plus b raised to power m minus 2 into a square what is y3 it is m 
into m minus 1 m minus 2 into a x plus p raised to power m minus 3 a cube and now guys it is the time to generalize this fact suppose if i continue like this what is my nth derivative again see to make it out the general figure this is y3 and what exactly we are my uh, subtracting here 2 which is one less than this subscript so can we like write this as m m minus 1 m minus 2 m minus 3 till 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 m minus of n minus 1 a x plus b raised to power how much m minus n into a raised to power how much n so this is turning out to be m into m minus 1 m minus 2 m minus 3 till m minus n plus 1 into a x plus b raised to power m minus n into a to the power n so guys we reach to the conclusion now what is the application of this formula suppose my question is find the nth derivative of y is equal to log x plus 1 now see how to find it let us find its first derivative what is y1 it is 1 over x plus 1 can we write this as x plus 1 raised to power minus 1 now guys to get nth derivative how many times we need to differentiate it we need to differentiate it n minus 1 times more so my y n in this case we can write d n minus 1 over d x n minus 1 of what dy by dx now guys we have studied the formula for a x plus b raised to power m and we have studied the formula for n at derivative something like this m m minus 1 m minus 2 m minus n plus 1 and a x plus b raised to power now suppose if i want to write for the n minus 1th derivative so what i need to do it is turning out to be m m minus 1 m minus 2 and then what i will do here now see i will write here m minus of what n minus 2 and ax plus b ax plus b m minus of n minus 1 and a raised to power n minus 1 so the formula comes like this will be behaving like this m minus n plus 2 and ax plus b now let us use this now my expression is this so here m is minus 1 m is minus 1 so what i will do here my n derivative will be minus 1 into minus 2 into minus 3 so here what i will i'm just substituting in place of m i'm substituting minus 1 till minus 1 minus n plus 2 and what is ax plus b that is x plus 1 now my m is in this case is minus 1 minus n plus 1 that's it and a is 1 now see guys can we write this as minus 1 
minus 2 minus 3. Now this is nothing but minus n plus 1. If I take minus sign outside, it is n minus 1 raised to power minus n. Now this uh, minus sign is multiplied how many times? n minus 1 times. It is turning out to 1 into 2 into 3 into n minus 1 over x plus 1 raised to power n. It is coming out to be this way. Now this if this n now this is 1 into 2 into 3 into n minus 1. Now we can write this as nothing but finally minus 1 raised to power n minus 1. This is n minus 1 factorial over x plus 1 raised to power n. So this is the n derivative of log x plus 1. So this is the application of the formula that we have done guys. Now the next comes uh, suppose we have the form uh, expression y is equal to sine ax plus b. Suppose we want to find its n derivative. What is the first derivative? This is cosine of ax plus b into a. Guys, can we switch to this as sine pi by 2 into ax plus b? Yes, because sine 90 plus theta is cos theta. Now, again differentiating it, we will get a square into cos pi by 2 plus ax plus b. Now my next question is can we write this as try to understand it a square sine of pi by 2 plus if I consider this as my theta. Yes, of course we can write it. Now see guys, uh, can if I continue like this, it is turning out to be a square sine 2 times of pi by 2 plus ax plus p. Now can we generalize it? If I continue like this, my third derivative will be a cube into sine thrice of pi by 2 plus ax plus b. Now if I continue like this, my n derivative will be a raised to power n sine n pi by 2 plus ax plus b. So guys this is the result for the n derivative. Now these are not so complicated, the only thing is that, that you have to learn the technique. Now next we have, suppose uh, we have y is equal to cosine of ax plus b. Now let us uh, find its n derivative. My first derivative will be negative times of sine ax plus b into a. Can we write this as guys? cos pi by 2 plus ax plus b into a. Of course we can write it because cos pi by 2 plus theta is minus sine theta in the second quadrant. And this is my y1. Now what is y2? This is minus sine times of pi by 2 ax plus b into a square. Again, we can write this as cos pi by 2 plus considering this whole thing as my theta now we can write this as further cos 
2 pi by 2 plus ax plus b into a square. This is my y3. Now guys, we can generalize this. My y3 will be cosine of thrice of x. So pi by 2 plus ax plus b into a square. Now if I continue like this, my nth derivative will be cos n pi by 2 plus ax plus b into a raised to power n. So that's the way to guys generalize it. Now I'm doing one application. So guys, in my next video, I will be uh, just solving the problems part. So in the first video, I'm just deriving the expressions for you people. So this is the formula. So I'm giving you one application just right now. So the question is find the nth derivative of cos square x. Now see, we don't have the formula for cos square x. Let y is equal to cos square x. Can we write cos square x as 1 plus cos 2x over 2? This is nothing but 1 by 2 plus half cos 2x. Now guys, uh, we know that if I start differentiating it and uh, just compare with this cos ax plus b. a is 2, a is 2. Okay. And b is 0. And you know the formula for this. This is nothing but cos n pi by 2 plus ax plus b. Now my nth derivative, because this half is constant, this is 0. This is half times of, and so sorry, here a raised to power n is also there. 2 raised to power n into cosine of 2x plus n pi by 2. That is the answer, guys. This is 2 raised to power n minus 1 cosine of 2x plus n pi by 2. I hope uh, it's an easy way to deal with this type of problems. Now we have the last formula. Suppose we have y is equals to e raised to power ax into cos bx. Now guys, let us uh, generalize this idea. Uh, my y1 will be, let us apply product rule, a into e raised to power ax cos bx. into minus sine bx into b. Can we take common e raised to power ax? It is turning out to be a cos bx and minus b sine bx like this. Okay. Now what I am going to do here, let a is equal to r cos theta and b is equal to r sin theta. Now squaring and adding, can we get this? Is equals to r square and if I divide it, my tan theta will be equals to b over a and theta is tan inverse b over a. Now let us make these substitution guys. So my y1 will become e raised to power ax r cos theta cos bx minus r sin theta sin bx. We can take r common. It is turning out to be cos theta cos bx minus sin theta sin bx. 
Now, can you recognize this identity? It is an identity for cos a plus b. Cos a plus b is cos a cos b minus sin a sin b. So, this is nothing but uh, cos bx plus theta. This is my y1. Now, guys, if I proceed to the, in the same fashion, my y2 turning out to be r a into e raised to power ax cos bx plus theta minus b sin bx plus theta into e raised to power ax. Again, if I take common, it is turning out to be a cos bx plus theta minus b sin bx plus theta. Now, uh, what exactly is a and b? We better know that we already substituted. My a is r cos theta minus b sin. So, what is b? Oh, in place of b, I will be writing uh, r sin theta. And sine bx plus theta. Now, guys, can we write this as if I take r common r square e raised to power ax cos theta cos bx plus theta minus sine theta sine bx plus theta. Now, again, it is turning out to be an identity. This is nothing but cos bx plus 2 theta. Now, guys, this is my second derivative. Now, we can easily reach to the conclusion of my n derivative r to the power n e raised to power ax cos bx plus n theta. So, this is the general formula that we have obtained. Now, what is r here? r is root a square plus b square and theta is tan inverse b over a. Now, guys, suppose uh, my question is y is equal to e raised to power x into cos x. Now, just first of all, let us compare what is a. a is 1, b is 1. So, my r is root 2. My theta is tan inverse 1. That is nothing but pi by 4. So, uh, we can easily get my n derivative as that is root 2 raised to power n e raised to power x cos x plus n pi by 4. That is the result guys. Uh, guys, uh, I am just leaving an assignment for you people. Suppose my question is e raised to power ax into sin bx. Uh, the final result will be it is uh, r to the power n e to the power ax into sin bx plus n theta. This can be also done in the similar fashion and r is nothing but root a square plus b square and theta is tan inverse b by a. I hope uh, guys uh, uh, you like this video. Uh, I just given all the detail that how this formula came into the existence it is very easy to uh, understand these formulas that how they came into the existence so uh, see you guys so we'll meet in the next video in the next video we'll be uh, doing the application of these formulas that how to apply these formulas to the various problem part so till then bye everyone